The aim of this video is to help physicians to improve outcomes for patients with high-risk diabetic feet. The biggest problem in persons with diabetes is loss of protective sensations in their feet. So we have to look for their foot problems and assess them effectively. The video will take you through Foot examination Diagnosis of neuropathy Indicators of neuropathy Indicators of neuropathy with peripheral vascular disease Indicators of infection Callus removal Plantar ulcer Deroofing bullet Trimming nails It should never be forgotten that 85% of the limb amputations are preceded with a small foot problem which is perceived as unimportant by the patient and often by the physician. This was a lot of people who have diabetes. I have a lot of injections and insulin. I have a lot of people who 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 have a lot of people. तर माझे डायबिटिक कंट्रोल न करता इथे चिरा मारण्यात आला तर त्यामुळे गँग्रीन मध्ये रूपांतर झाला आणि मांडी जवळ माझा पाय कापण्यात आला जखम झाली तवा बसेच नाही तर रक्ताची साखर खूप वाढली माझी ऑपरेशन करा फलाना करा पण ते काही जमलं नाही पाय कापाचाच मने मग कापला बापा पाय आता बाय कॅचिंग फूड प्रॉब्लेम्स अर्ली we can make all the difference to our diabetic patients and prevent amputations. First, look at the dorsum of the feet and palpate. Look for growth of hair normally present on the medial border of the dorsum. Look at the medial borders the lateral borders feel the back of the foot observe the tip of the toes look in between toes observe the nails Look at the planters of the foot. Feel for bony prominences. Also look for peripheral pulsations. This is the tendon of the extensual hallucis. Just lateral to that, feel the dorsalis pedis. Similarly, this bony prominence is called the medial malleolus. And just posterior to that, behind the medial malleolus, feel for the posterior tibial. Check the temperature of the skin and look for any swelling. Check the mobility of the toes, especially the great toe. We do not require any high-tech gadgets to make a diagnosis of neuropathy in the feet. With very simple devices like a wisp of cotton, a tendon hammer, a 128Hz tuning fork and a 10 gram monofilament, it is possible to make a diagnosis of neuropathy or loss of sensation in the feet of a diabetic patient. Use a 10 gram monofilament to assess the protective sensations. Patients who respond are low risk. Use a 128Hz tuning fork to assess the vibration sensation. A handheld Doppler is used to listen to pulses and signals. If you have access to a biothesiometer, use it to assess the vibration perception. Indicators of neuropathy. Dry skin due to lack of sweat indicates neuropathy. If not treated, it could lead to fissures and cracks. Deformities like claw feet too indicate neuropathy. So do other deformities like Halix valgus, 
Hammer Tools, Flatfoot, Pest Cavus. The other indicators of neuropathy are Callus, Abnormal shape of foot, Plantar neuropathic ulcer on bony prominence, Prominent veins on the dorsum of foot, Nail pathologies like deformed, Crooked nails, and limited joint mobility. Indicators of neuropathy with peripheral vascular disease are loss of peripheral pulsation, loss of hair on dorsum, dark dusky skin, feet turning red in dependent position, and neuro ischemic ulcer. Indicators of infection discharge from feet indicates infection. Presence of maceration is usually a sign of fungal infection. On observing reddish skin with swelling, always keep shock of foot as differential diagnosis. In my clinical practice, the patients with longer duration of diabetes, when they present with foot lesions, they usually mix or in combination with all three, that is peripheral neuropathy, peripheral vascular disease, and they are also infected. After the clinical examination, every patient should be categorized according to risk to determine frequency of checkup. No sensory neuropathy once a year. Sensory neuropathy once every six months. Sensory neuropathy and signs of peripheral vascular disease and or foot deformities once every three months. Previous ulcer once every one to three months. Before the patient leaves the clinic, familiarize him or her with characteristics of appropriate footwear. Correct shoe size, roomy toe box, no toe cap, fastening with either laces or Velcro, a firm heel counter, soft inner lining, soft insole, and a rigid outsole. Callus builds at pressure points on the plantar skin in neuropathic feet. It is prominently seen on the metatorsal heads, ball of the great toe. Callus removal is extremely important as it reduces the plantar pressure and risk of plantar ulceration. With the other hand, apply firm skin tension. Preferably use a number 10 blade. Remove callus just deep enough to avoid bleeding. If callus is thick, cut in layers, not in one piece. Removal of callus often reveals a pre-existing ulcer, which needs immediate attention. Trimming should be done periodically. Advise appropriate footwear with insole to prevent rapid regrowth. Plantar ulcer. Plantar ulcers are commonly seen on the forefoot, on the metatarsal heads, ball of the great toe, areas of increased plantar pressure. Healing of these ulcers is essential as they have a tendency to deepen, get infected and destroy the underlying bone, ultimately requiring an amputation. What you need to do is, first, clean the ulcer. Remove the surrounding callus. Use the finger of the other hand to stretch the skin to make it easier. You may want to explain to the patient that by removing the callus from around the edges, you are reducing areas of high pressure. Use a probe to check how deep the ulcer is. Probing up to the bone suggests osteomyelitis. Scrape from the base of the ulcer for bacterial culture. To measure the ulcer, take a sheet of transparency. Cut into two pieces. Place one piece on the ulcer and the other directly on top of the first one. Make your marking on this piece as it is not in direct contact with the wound. 
so it won't become messy when you store it in the records. Please make sure you write the direction the name and the date Finally, clean and dress the ulcer As plantar ulcers are pressure ulcers offloading is a must for healing The options are crutches, walker, wheelchair, bed rest, total contact cast, which is really the best treatment. If footwear has been the cause, that footwear should be abandoned. To prevent a recurrence, advise appropriate footwear and offloading. I've had two passions. One, wearing this big nice bindi and second, wearing high heel sandals. I have been very, very fond of them. But ever since my doctor advised to use flat sandals, I realized that my problem or my ulcer never ever reoccurred. And I am so very thankful and grateful to the doctor because of whom today I have been able to walk with grace and confidence. De-roofing bullet. Bule are superficial fluid-filled sacs, often seen in neuropathic feet. They usually occur due to friction injuries, like ill-fitting shoes, or prolonged walking, or thermal injuries due to hot fermentation. De-roof them with scissors to drain contents. Toenails in people with diabetes are often thick, crooked, and deformed. Patients find it difficult to cut them properly and invariably hurt the soft tissue. Such patients should regularly get their toenails trimmed in the foot clinic. Cut nails straight across and away from the skin. File the sharp edges and file in one direction. Throughout the world, diabetic foot patients are walking step by step down a road which ends in amputation. The bottom line therefore is that we doctors need to examine the feet of our diabetic patients at a very early stage. This film has given you practical guidelines. Pick up neuropathy at a very early stage and this will go a long way. To turn them around and lead them step by step away from the road to amputation and into a world of safety. I follow my doctor's advice on diet, exercise and medication and I take special care while selecting my footwear as per my doctor's advice. And thanks to this, I have had no problems with my feet and I am able to go about my business normally.